I'm going to search up, I'm going to browse, okay? And then if I'm working on the computer, I can pull up the computer files off the desktop in Foam Lab. If I'm working on the jump drive, I can pull them up off jump drive. So I'm going to go find the jump drive, okay? I'm going to go into Foam Lab. I'm going to go into Foam Lab again, okay? The vice template right here is always there. It's always named the vice template. So don't name something over top of it. Keep it named that. It's just a template with a vice in it. You have to open up the vice template first, okay? So we're gonna open up the vice template. Notice I said open the vice template. We're opening it. Okay, now we have a vice template. The yellow strip is just telling us it's a different version. This was 2018 and we're running 2019 right now, okay? So that's step one. Always start with step one, okay? Step two, okay? We're gonna go to file, and we're not gonna open, because then it'll just open it up. We're gonna hit merge. We're gonna merge the first part, okay? Okay, now I'm going back to the same place I was just at, off the foam lab on the USB drive, and I'm going to go into level one parts, okay? And I'm going to go to L1 part one. You notice that name? L1 part one, L1 part two, L1 part three. Those are all the names that I want those files to remain, the same name, okay? So I'm going to merge L1 part one in, Okay, and I'm gonna say okay, just say okay to this green check mark here. And the file's there. That's the file. So the file came in way off location, so we're gonna move it to location, okay? But what I wanna do now is, this is probably a critical step. I used to do this on step four. I'm moving it to step three. I used to do it on step five or six. It doesn't have to be done right away. But I'm going to try to get you in the habit of saving it right away, okay? And so what I'm going to do, and that way we don't save it over top of the vice template. It has a unique name, okay? I'm going to go um, file, save as, I'm going to browse. I want to be in the same area that I'm at, okay? Now you see, you see this right here? This is the Foam Lab vice template. If I name it as that, I have a vice and have a part in the vice. I don't want that. So what I want to do is I'm going to just highlight that to bring it down here. And I'm going to put my initials at the end of it. Okay? And I'm going to, I'm going to try to keep the same format on everything I do. If I use capital letters here, I'm using capital letters every time. If I use small letters, I'm using small letters every time, okay? So I'm just gonna put a dash and then KD. Does anybody else have the initials KD? No, but you should make them capital. Do it, do it <laughs> however, however you wanna do it. You can pick them capital, you can pick them small. I, I like mine small, and, and I'll show you why in just a second, okay? So now I'm gonna save it, okay? taking a little time to do this. And then at the very top of the screen, look up here, after you save it, it's gonna change from Foam Lab, Foam Lab Vice Template to your name, L1 Part 1 dash KD, okay? And the reason I'm doing that is I want them all in order on the list. That's what I was talking about earlier today. If they're all in order on the list, and I say, which file are you working on? And you say, I don't know. We open it up, look at it, and file seven has, has been name changed. You have an extra file seven with your initials. I know that's the last one you work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it on the bottom left-hand corner of these two pieces. 
okay? And I'm going to zoom in really close so you can see where that's at. See where that's at? The bottom left-hand corner. I'm going to click once. Okay, now it's anchored. Just watch. Just watch. It's anchored to Just those watch. two lines that intersect. See that? Now I have to take that ball, I have to click on that ball, and I have to move the ball to the next intersection of the vice datum. Where the F9 key, okay, if you don't know where the F, if you don't know where it is, if you hit F, F9, see where F9 goes? Right there? That's where I want to put it, okay? So you have to do this in two moves. You have to click on the ball, move it to there, get it to highlight that, and then click again and you're done. Okay? So let's do it. Click on the ball. Now it's stuck to my cursor. Okay? Zoom in on it at a good angle. That it's easy to get the wrong place. You see where see where it flashes right there? You see it turn white. See it see it get connected to it? Don't miss it. It snaps to the grid. See how it snaps to it? Mm -hmm. As soon as it snaps, click on the ball again. Click. Okay? And then say OK with the green check mark, and it'll turn purple. The reason that it turned purple is when Mastercam moves something or copies it, the original file is red, the copy that you put it to is purple. So you know your original is red, your copy is purple. So now in order to get it back, I can just clear the colors. I can go up here to the, I think it's the home screen, and uh, clear colors. So now it's back to the blue color that it was. That's called a dynamic transform, okay? Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is, you wanna do this before you start doing tool pads. If you start doing tool paths and you don't have tools, you don't have the right tools that we're trying to use on the machine that you're going to be cutting on. The machine we're cutting on has 10 tools in it. The tool list you're going to get might have nine. The nine tools that you have are all tools that are loaded in the machine. So what you're cutting in here, you're cutting with this, everybody's cutting with the same 10 tools out there that you're using in here. Okay, that makes it for simplicity. It's up to you to decide which tool to use to do a part. If you got an eighth inch slot and a part, you can't use a quarter inch tool to cut that slot. So we'll, we'll work on figuring out what tool to use as well. But you have to have the tools available to you. If you don't get these tools, you have like 256 tools available to you. And we can't use tools out of that list. We have to use tools out of our list. Okay, so if we go up to our tool paths tab, Okay, and we go to our tool manager, tool manager, okay, you see all those tools right there? There's a ton of tools. I've got a list of tools that's um, 427 tools. So you got drills, you got end mills, you got reamers, you got everything, taps, Everything's there. We don't want to take from that list, okay? The tool list is in your file folder for the foam lab, the same place as your vice is. It's got a different name. That's why when you go open your vice, you don't see it because it doesn't have a, it has a different file extension and it's not looking for it. So now when I go in here and I say open right here, okay? I say open, and I'm going to go to I'm going to go to my USB drive, and I'm going to go to my foam lab. You see that foam tool list right there? I'm going to double click on that. Did it work? I think it's thinking. Oh, yep. Yeah. Okay, so I've got nine tools there, right? So I've taken, I've taken the file directory on the master, master cam file directory for tools, and I've said, 
I don't want to use those tools. I want to use the tools that I just copied to my jump drive. Where are they at? They're in the foam lab directory, right next, right below the, um, the machine for the vices, the vice template. That's where they're at. So if you don't know where they're at, go here and go look for them, okay? They're all there. I need to highlight those and bring them up here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, I'm gonna click on the top one. I'm gonna hold my shift key down, click on the bottom one, which highlights them all. And then with my left mouse button, I'm gonna click, hold down, drag and drop. So now they're in that right there. Okay, so now that they're here, I'm ready to start doing tool paths. Okay. Does that make sense? Is the green check mark after that? Or? When you're done, like I said, with everything else, the green check mark by three and a quarter. And the distance between is one and a half inches. So what what this does is it, it matches the stock this way, this way, and this way. Okay? So if you don't define your material, when you start cutting it, you're not gonna see your tool paths. Okay, so to define your material, just go over here into your tool path area where it says stock setup. It's right underneath your properties, okay? Now we're in, we're in our stock setup and we're gonna say display right here, okay? And we're gonna come down and hit, hit select corners, okay? And we're going to select two opposing opposite corners, one on the bottom, one on the top, and that will give us our 1.5 height. Okay, right there. So I picked those, and now you know you did it right when you see your three and a quarter by three and a quarter by one and a half. If you do it wrong, you won't see a Z, or you'll see the wrong numbers. And you can also look at this X, Y, Z. That's gonna be the same on every part. So once you've done one part and you've done two, you've done three, you've done four, you're gonna see they start repeating. Okay, so you start recognizing numbers. Okay, except that now that you hit displayed, okay, after, after you look at it next, you're gonna see a dotted line all the way around your whole part. So you'll see where your, your part is sitting. Okay, so you see the dotted lines there? This part well, already has on tool paths. So the top one is facing. The second one is high speed dynamic. The third one is um, 2D high speed. Then we've got a drilling routine. And then we've got a contour routine that cuts the chamfer. Okay, so I'm just gonna run that in a verify. I, I like to hit the Alt 7, give me that view. And then I put my mouse above the part and I zoom in on it like that. So I got a really good view of it. I'm gonna go into the verify and look at it run. I'll maximize my screen so I can see it a lot better. Okay, so maximize your screen. Okay, whatever view you were just in is gonna be the same view that you're in in your verify. So now I'm gonna slow it down just a little bit on this slow button here. This is like a tape deck you know what a tape deck is, right? Okay, so we're facing it. We're doing a dynamic milling routine on the outside of the part. Then we're gonna do the same thing on the pockets. Okay. Then we're gonna drill. And the very last thing we did was chamfer. Okay, when you, when you do your chamfer, you back it up just a little bit Let's see, let's get it right on that chamfer there. Okay, when you when you look at your chamfer in the part, you should see your tool right on the edge of your part. See how that tool is right there on the edge? That, that right there is how I know I have a good chamfer. So I believe this is 10 thousandths down, and then I'm cutting 10 thousandths below with the tip of the tool. And we'll go over that next.